Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today in part 3 we will continue our work on the FT221. I have to apologize myself, I spoke sometimes about version R, this is not version R. I hashed it up with another project I have in mind, but this is the FT221. The difference is only in the arrangement of the switches here. The R version has the option to install a second uh, repeater shift, not only 600 kilohertz. This one has 600 kilohertz. There's an option for a second um, shift to be installed, which is not really not not necessary, not needed. So uh, this version is is also good enough for our purposes. We will continue our work with the alignment and do some modifications in the power supply, especially at the setting of the line voltage. So let's start. The transceiver is wired for 220 volt. AC, this is not good for our days. We have 235 or so, a little bit more than 230. So we have to reconnect this white wire, which comes from the fuse, not to the 110 volt, but to the 117 volt. This is this one, 117 volt tapping. And the zero goes here again to 110. It has to be connected to the 117 volt to this one. This is free, this is not, not used. And then this white goes to the switch on the front panel. So first step is to rewire it. It's also described here in the, in the manual. The next is the check of the electrolytics in C2. I don't take them out. I only check them. Should have 2200 microfarad. I switch my capacitance meter to 120 Hertz and I connect them and we can see 4.2 millifarad. This is caused because these two uh, electrolytics are nearly in parallel. When I go to the other one have the same value for millifarad and a rather good dissipation factor when I go to one kilohertz of course the okay it's 1.8 millifarad it's a little bit less than 2200 but I think these capacitors are okay the third one I will check with this one is for the 13 volt blocking and here's the ground at one kilohertz we can measure uh, 500, uh, okay, what does it have by, yes we have 2.5 millifarad at 120 hertz, this capacitor is also okay. The other ones I can't check directly, I have no access to them, but I think uh, I don't see any signs of leakage or that they are bulged, okay, could be dried out. In the moment I have no indications that there is something faulty, I will do the first alignment step and set the voltage of the regulator board, the output voltage, and measure the ripple under full load condition. There are two different uh, alignment procedures uh, I found in the net. One is the so-called service manual for the FT221R, but it's also for the 221 without R so-called factory alignment pro procedure. It starts with the regulator board. Makes sense to check 13.5 volt. That's it. That's okay. And the other one has 8 volt, which is used for all other circuits. 8.02. It's also okay. No further action needed. A funny observation, the other one uh, of the alignment procedure is in the manual, for the operator manual. There's also a procedure which is similar to the other one, but the alignment of the regulator in unit is the last one. We do a lot of alignments, set frequencies, and then we check the 13.5 volt and the 8 volt. Is it a joke or what is it? If this voltage is wrong, the, especially the 8 volt, because this voltage is used for all 
uh, frequency relevant circuits for all oscillators, then we have to do the complete alignment procedure again. This has to be located here as the first one, not the last one. Okay, next step is I have said is the measurement of the ripple under full load condition. We are checking the ripple and the voltage regulator. We have here the two electrolytics. We measured that they are obviously okay. That's a rectifier and here we have the voltage stabilizer, a series regulator, that's the input. I measure with the scope this voltage, I measure the base voltage and I measure the emitter voltage. And this voltage here should be also always above these output voltages where, whereby we have a difference from here to here 0.6 volt, 0.7 volt at higher loads or 0.8 volt, we will see. It's important that this voltage here is always much lower than the minimum voltage with the ripple seen here or vice versa. The minimum voltage, we have a voltage drop in the, during the charging and discharging process of this electrolytics. This minimum voltage has to be always above this voltage, 2 or 3 volt for a good uh, regulation. I will do this measurement in mode FM with full output power and my scope is connected with three channels to this transistor. The three channels are here connected. The blue one, the purple or pink one, it's purple on the screen, and the yellow one. The yellow one is the voltage on the uh, electrolytics. The blue one is the voltage at the base of the transistor and this is the output voltage of the transistor on the emitter. And when I go to FM, maximum output power, we have here roughly 20 watt full scale. Then we can measure now the voltage on the power supply and the voltage drop. Now the check on the load. We are measuring here the minimum voltage of the capacitor voltages. These, is, these are the two voltages on the transistor. Base voltage and emitter voltage. It's the 13.5 and a little bit more, 14 or nearly 15 volt. Voltage minimum under load when I switch on the transmitter, we see it's 17 volt, so it is a sufficient overhead from here to here for a good uh, stabilization of the output voltage. Yes, there is another transistor which needs another 0 0.6 volt uh, voltage drop. It is this one. Not only this one, this also needs 0 0.6 volt, but this 27 volt here are sufficient also for this transistor. Well, and uh, 20 watt is a little bit too much output. I make a stop, switch off. It's a little bit too much output power. I will reduce the power to uh, 12 or 15 watt, and then the uh, voltage drop here will be less. Well, but this indicates that the power supply is okay and we can continue our work. Check our alignment of the VFO frequency. The dial is set to zero. Zero, zero. Frequency should be exactly 8 MHz, and it is. Fine calibration can be done with the calibration knob, which squeezes the dial, fixes it, and then the knob can be turned a little bit, and the frequency can be adjusted exactly to zero. Not necessary to do it, but in general, the VFO is okay. We can do a, a small check of the other end of 500. Seventy, eighty, ninety, zero. We have eight, five hundred. So let's go down to four hundred. Whether we have a we have a good linearity. Yes, four hundred and a little bit more. We have three hundred and a little bit more. That is two hundred. A little bit more, yes, then we have 100, and again down to zero, we check the backlash, but it is zero, so we have a good uh, linearity over the 500 kilohertz range. Next step is the S-meter calibration. 
mode is AM. In mode AM, RF gain control fully counterclockwise to the left, so we have S minute deflection. It should indicate 10. Ten watt uh, dB. What is it? That's P out. Is it meant fully scale? Okay, makes sense to say when we have in counterclockwise position. The pot is this, and the R. This is BIF unit. The other one is to be set to zero. A little bit strange what 10 means. I would say this is S9 or 10 dB over S9 or so, because the figure 10 is the output power. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. In the other alignment procedure from the manual, it is clearly stated adjust VR902 until the meter indicates full scale. Okay, counterclockwise full scale, it is 10, and the other one is zero. That's okay. The next step is the alignment of the uh, PL unit. It requires um, access to a point where there is no test point. So I soldered a small lug here onto it to have access and then I can use a small test clip like this to measure it. It's difficult, it's a different version. Uh, maybe in the other version of this PLL unit there is a test point. Here are some test points here, here. But this one, which is necessary to measure the tuning voltage for the um, vary caps, there is no test point. It's not a good idea to take this unit onto an extender board. By the way, I don't have the Ryder extender boards for the T uh, 2 to 1 or other Yesus from those days. I only have other extender boards, but not this one. But I wouldn't do it. It's an uh, HF unit and uh, when aligning an HF unit, it should be in the original place and not outside the unit. So I think it is not a, not a good idea to take it out. It's uh, the best idea to have it on an extender board inside the uh, radio. This point is connected to the <coughs> multimeter. It seems to be a stable voltage. Range is 144. And the VFO is to the most counterclockwise position. It's below zero. Here we have zero. But we have to go to the position where the uh, mechanism is blocked. And then there's a trim pot, uh, sorry, uh, a trim capacitor in the uh, PLL oscillator, which should be set so the voltage here is 4.5 volt. On this band, this range, a little bit difficult to get access to it. There is no chance to get it down to 4.5 volt DC. 5.2 is the lowest possible voltage. The setting range is not sufficient. Okay. There's also a coil. Maybe the coil should be adjusted. For a, for a lower, sorry, for a, yes, for a lower inductivity. Let's check the voltage for, for the higher bands. When I switch to the higher bands, what happens? Suspicious. Suspicious, suspicious. I 
makes no sense do I have the wrong alignment procedure the wrong information or is there something wrong with this board I have to check the frequencies which are coming out and in so I'm not sure whether I'm on the right track here maybe you have to check the version of the schematic and the board layout and compare it with the layout what I have because this board version here is not the, the perfect one or oh, we still have a problem because as you remember in part one we had the, the modifications that the RF gain pot was in parallel with this trim pot which sets the bias for the uh, AG, uh, for the uh, PLL lock voltage there's a JFET transistor in it and the biasing of this JFET transistor which controls the VCO is set with this pot maybe there is still another problem I am not convinced that it's everything okay I cannot do what I want this is ugly 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 on the other uh, hand we have to consider that there is a second um, battery cap in parallel I show you in the schematic one moment we have the transistor and here we have the trimmer which sets the source voltage of this JFET the JFET itself is grounded so it's a depletion type it needs a negative gate voltage or it is not possible here because it is grounded we need a positive source voltage similar to a tube where we need a positive cathode voltage this trim pot here only sets the biasing and optimizes the setting range and this output here goes to this diode via the 100k resistor to this battery cap and tunes the circuit but here's a second one which is connected in parallel I just uh, aligned this trimmer here and the second one is controlled by the external tuning voltages that means when I switch the band this battery cap is preset to the band to make the alignment easier or the tuning easier while, uh, for the PLL I checked these voltages they are obviously okay I'm not absolutely sure but this may be the reason why the voltage didn't change when I switched through the uh, bands maybe if this tuning is set correctly I'm not sure in the moment I have to check the output voltages I prepared to do this and this will be part of the next step now we are at the end of part 3 about the videos of the FT221 I will continue in part 4 in the moment I have not so much time to produce videos on YouTube due to some circumstances in my private environment I have some obligations to fulfill so I uh, readjusted my priorities and uh, YouTube has not the highest priority you can imagine it has a rather low priority for me I do want to produce uh, good videos or no videos so I uh, decided to increase the time between the videos to fulfill both to produce vi uh, videos but good videos hope you understand it by the way the situation is not related to my person stay healthy stay tuned see you on this channel